Dead bodies will continue to be transformed into the flesh-eating ghouls. Hi, I'm Suki Bill, and you're watching Pathophysiology of Living Dead. This is the third part of our Zombie Flux game review, and this is an interview with an artist by the name of Derek Ring. He did the artwork for Zombie Flux, and he's done some other really cool stuff, so let's listen. On the line, I have Derek Ring, illustrator of Zombie Flux, among other things. Hi, Derek. Hi there. Can you tell me a little bit about drawing and designing the zombies for Flux? Um, yeah, I guess so. It, uh, I was just, uh, sitting at home doing my, doing my usual zombie drawing thing by myself. And, uh, these guys, uh, got a hold of me and they were looking to, um, they were looking to have somebody else draw the, uh, the zombies for their, for their new card set. I guess, uh, Andy Looney, uh, his real name, um, of Looney Labs, uh, usually draws all of the, um, all the characters and all the, all the equipment and all the, uh, cards for the the flux games and on um, this one they wanted to go a little bit different so they uh they kind of reached out and um you know we've had a good relationship over the last couple of years i did the first set um and then they came back to me a year later and i did um some extra pieces for them because i guess it was a pretty popular pretty popular set yeah definitely so yeah i just actually just got that set yesterday in the mail so uh I, i'm the, really enjoying it so the the new set the yep the flamethrower booster ah uh, Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Your zombies, they're not, at least for Flux, they're not overly gory. They don't have a lot of blood. And I understand Andy didn't want any eyeballs popping out or anything too graphic, but uh, right. I I still think you did a good job with the amount of rot and decomposition. <laughs> Definitely, there's definitely some ways. There's some ways to do it, and there's some some ways to not do it. I generally try to keep stuff towards the um, to, towards the fun side, even though it's supposed to be a shambling undead pile of, you know, mucus and whatnot. Um, but you know, I have nieces and nephews, and I and I'd rather not be doing stuff that's so completely, so completely over the top gory. Yeah. You know. Well, I'll have to tell you, one of my favorite pieces I didn't know was yours until I started doing uh, research for this piece is, let me describe it for you and our listeners, the background is a heart, and there's this zombie coming up behind <laughs> this large-chested woman, and he's grabbing her boobs! Underneath is the caption that says, yummy! <laughs> yeah. I love that. I think that's hilarious. I, I, yeah, I, I have this, um, in the last couple of years, I, I guess I sort of had, turning over a romantic leaf or something like that, but I really feel like there's a, you know, whether it's King Kong and Fay Ray or, you know, uh, Dracula and a woman or something like that, but there's this really interesting, um, this really interesting sort of uh, dynamic in, that, that between, you know, sex and monsters and, and romance and monsters. So, you know, the, the, the creepiest, the creepiest scene I've ever seen in a movie is also like the most romantic scene I've ever seen in a movie. And it's the creature from the black lagoon swimming, you know, seven feet below the woman that he's falling in love with while she's swimming on the surface. He's just below, like looking up at her and keeping pace with her. And it's very creepy. And it's also very, at the same time, I just yeah. think there's so much uh, interesting material to be mined there, and, and it's it, you know it sort of appeals it appeals to uh, to boys and girls, and it's not just gory; it's also uh, I guess a little bit sweet. Yeah, definitely is. So you have a lot of zombie drawings. Why why zombies? Um, I have been uh, I've actually been designing uh, Halloween masks and props and things like that for the last couple of years, and. Um, so you start to get requests and you start to get requests and all of a sudden you become that guy. So uh, I, you know, it's fun and I get, I get emails every day from people who, who, who really dig it and, uh, you know, people who, who want to see more. So I guess, um, you know, it's kind of the thing where if I, if I started designing doorknobs, you know, and people like them, I'd still be designing doorknobs to this day, I guess. But uh, that's sort of the niche that I fell into and I enjoy it. So, you know, keep going. It comes easy to me. Right. So. Okay. Do what you like. So. <laughs> so I see you had a career in advertising that you uh dropped to do this? Uh pretty much. I um I was doing I was doing the old uh graphic design game and then I uh 
I, I moved from a couple ad agencies. I started out, I, I really started my career in, in uh, graphic design doing, you know, the lowest, literally the lowest of the low. I was doing uh, used car lists for a, a local um, car dealership at this small ad agency. And, and literally they wanted to like send me home because there wasn't enough work and they just moved into a new office. So I ended up, I offered to like, I painted the place, you know, I put, I put moldings in just to, just to make sure that I didn't go back to my, my job, you know, washing dishes at the last place. And, um, so sort of moved on from there to another place. And then I wanted to, uh, I, you know, I always wanted to draw comics. I always wanted to draw, you know, monsters and girls in bikinis and things like that. But uh, you just sort of get roped into that that other world. And I started moving up and moving up and hit a point where I just realized, you know, I had a boss who, who turned me down from promotion. And he said, you know, your portfolio is all illustration. I can't use this. Why don't you become an illustrator? And uh, I was pretty mad because I didn't get that promotion. But, you know, a little while later, I realized, you know, I might as well chuck it and sit in my house and listen to loud music and, you know, draw monsters grabbing girls' boobies. Hey, you can't beat that. <laughs> it's my my whole resume. I hope it wasn't too boring right there. No, no, actually it was uh enjoyable. <laughs> but it is it is a, I guess it's sort of the thing where you you have to just keep at it. You know, there's there's some awful crap you have to do, but if you you know, paint yourself in a corner with some some career that you're not going to like, you can always reset yourself, but you just got to keep your eyes on the prize if you want to do any of this kind of stuff. So now you're uh designing some comments or uh, I have been uh, I had been doing comics for a while and then I, I quit for a while because I was you know tied up in a whole bunch of other stuff. But in the last couple of years, I decided you know I'm gonna I'm just gonna you know pull back on the on the finances of what I need and actually just take you know take time for myself and and draw comics. And I've got you know I've got a couple leads right now. Um, some stuff maybe 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 with Dark Horse maybe maybe with DC right now. Um, I've been talking to some editors and, and, um, you know, the comics industry is a little, a little tight right now. So I'm not, you know, I'm, I don't have any super faith in, <laughs> in getting the big job right away, but, um, I've been talking to those guys and, um, you know, working on my own stuff and, and really that's, that's the way to do it. Any, any aspiring comic artist just needs to keep, keep at it. Yeah. Are you a fan of zombie movies? Uh, I am. I definitely am. All right, Sandy Looney. I talked to him yesterday. He said he wasn't really a fan. But... No, I I think that I, I think that Zombie Flux was a, was almost a surprise to him. Where I I think they just thought it would be you know funny to do it, and then and then it turned out to be like one of their big sellers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He actually forced himself to sit down and watch uh, the original Night of Living Dead and a uh, few other movies. So yeah, they're they're really not that kind of people. They're they're yeah. as you can see from some of the zombies, they're kind of hippies. Yeah, and, oh yeah, um, they, are. they wanted hippie zombies. <laughs> yeah. So, when you drew the zombies for Flux, did you um, model any of the zombies after anybody, or just um, pull them out of your head? Most of them are just kind of characters from my head. You know, you, you always have a little bit of a backstory for for this one and that one, but you don't. You know, most mostly you just want them to look different. You want, you know, you if you have a couple kids, you want to make sure that they look different. If you have a, uh, you know, they say we have three guys. Well, one of them's got to look like, you know, they can't look at all the same. So one of them's a mailman and one of them's a mm-hmm. guy with no shirt or, you know, things like that. But there really, really wasn't anything modeled too much off of anybody. I know Andy is in the game and somebody else from their office, but I'm not sure who it was. It was a couple of years ago. I drew that one. And they're, they're as the friends. Oh yeah. Um, Kristen, his uh, wife. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, What's your favorite zombie movie? Uh, I'd have to say, uh, you know, Night of the Living Dead. And I know this, this may not be the most popular answer in the world, but I really like 28 Days Later. Yeah, I did too. There's a lot of, you know, people say, oh, it's not a zombie movie because they're not dead. It's an infection yeah. movie. But it has zombie movie aspects. It's good enough for me. <laughs> yeah. I I really I think I really enjoy you know zombie movies and zombie movies, but there's really not much um, science behind it. You know, mm-hmm. there's never really any true answer of like where they came from. So I mean, it's fun to like it's fun to dress up and have blood all over us and walk around and stuff. But I really do enjoy the science of stuff. In fact, that's um, that's where I've been pushing my comics towards is really sort of exploring the aspects of is it a disease? Is it uh, where does it come from? Like what you know. 
what is this? Right. In addition to having some some stories with it. Right. Good. So That's I kind of enjoy the twenty eight days later aspect of it having, um, you know, it being a disease and not just a um, unknowable, you know, something. And the and the zombies are are pretty pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They are. So I, one of your other illustrations has a woman on a bed surrounded by monsters. And in the background, I see Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees. <laughs> yes. Uh, that, was for, uh, that was for a client of mine that uh, actually sells uh, Halloween masks. Okay. So uh, a lot of those are actually masks. Uh, I actually didn't, I don't think I designed any of those masks. Those were actually done by a bunch of um, sculptors that we hired. I think a lot of them were from uh, Brazil, Brazilian sculptors that we were working with at the time. And um, they, uh, they, you know, they sent us a bunch of masks, and I got the prototypes and started cartooning them up. Um, and you know, that was a that was a cover of a catalog for for those guys. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. So, what's your take on Jason Voorhees? Is he a zombie or is he not? I don't know. He lived under that lake for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, right. so so he wasn't breathing too much oxygen. <laughs> There's a good chance he is a zombie. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of speculation going on about that too. So yeah, maybe maybe that is a zombie movie. There's there's a lot of movies that uh, you can't. I, I guess it's a zombie movie. You, you don't Who know, knew? right? Right. Now they don't pen it as being a zombie, but yeah, he could be he could be a type of zombie. I think. Um, yeah. If yeah. you can count the guys in Twenty Eight Days Later as zombies, you can probably stretch it for Jason being a type of zombie. Right. I th I think that maybe the thing for 28 Days Later is that I don't know that they can be cured. So, you know, they're as good as dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's not like it's not like you can cure this disease and then they come back. I mean, the best that they're ever going to get is 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 this zombie state um, and then dead. So I don't know. Right. So they are kind of the walking dead almost. <laughs> Pretty way. much. I mean, they're yeah. they're. They've they've at least got a death sentence, you know. They're going to wear down or whatever, but they're never going to become normal people again. Yeah, yeah. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, no, not too much. I mean, I guess if anybody's interested in my work, they can uh, they can check out my blog. It's uh, DerekRing.blogspot.com, or um, they can check out my website. But that doesn't uh, update nearly as much as my blog does, and that would be uh, AbnormalBrain.com. Uh, but you know, that's about it. I, I should have some new comics going up soon. I'm working on, um, this isn't zombie related, but I, I got a new script, uh, that I kind of liked. I'm working on a, uh, actually it is a little bit zombie related where, um, I had done a poster a couple of years ago of, a uh, a, a, a sexy lady riding on a, a, some sort of a large ghoul zombie through space. And I mm -hmm. got a script in the mail the other day that I kind of liked that was based on that. So I'm going to be drawing that up pretty soon, but, um, all right. Yeah, so if anybody wants to check out any of the, the comics or anything like that, it's, it's, all, uh, it's all online there. All right, excellent. Well, thank you, Derek. All right, thank you very much. So there he is, Derek Ring. Artist, great guy. DerekRing.blogspot.com. Check it out. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Pathophysiology of the Living Dead. It's a, I know it was a little different this episode, but I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to stay spooky.